So we've got a character. He moves around. He's got a little bit of sort of a physics-y pivot on him as when he stops. Um, if he taps A, does a jump. Very contrasty, squash and stretchy jump. If he taps A whilst he's in the air, do a double jump. And it's not really getting you much height, but it, it sustains you in the air in a sort of helicopter motion for a minute. And if you see this spinning around, you know, visually he's essentially sort of like spinning his weapon around him. So you actually can't double jump if you don't have your weapon. Um, yeah. So <coughs> we enter another player into the fray, and now he does a swing backwards with a tap of A, and he's pressing the stick backwards, so you know, north. He holds it down, so it's now locked behind him. It's like a charge of attack. And then he triggers a boomerang throw instead of a just letting go of the button, which would swipe. So the green player does an A tap to jump over and then double jump because the way the boomerang has this kind of contrasty, uh, you know, s uh, sort of fast in, really slow at the top, fast out, it kind of stays underneath him, homing on him. And the other guy double jumps to stay in the air a little longer and drops down. You'll see that. <coughs> when red guy catches his sword again it kind of knocks him backwards because there's this whole thing again really wanting every mechanic to be sort of you know every action has an equal opposite reaction kind of thing um, okay so red guy just does the same thing again charges his sword up and throws it as a boomerang this time however the green guy demonstrates something else he can do he swings his sword to the right keeps it charged and now he has essentially a big powerful swing to the left sort of ready to go so when the red guy throws his boomerang green guy knocks it away like so um, and now the sword is sort of taken out of play uh, red would have to physically collide with the sword again in order to uh, be able to pick it back up. So green kind of stands on top of it and he's now guarding it. It's, he's sort of got the advantage and all he needs to do is just kill red, who has no way of defending himself apart from, I guess, offensively dodging. So red does a dodge underneath the sword, picks it back up, and what I'm demonstrating here is your sword swings can only ever affect the, um, you know, sort of middle layer of depth around the sort of halfway up the collider and when you're dodging you shrink down to half your size and so it just passes right over you. Um, <coughs> Red picks this all back up and then I show the sort of visuals of what if you both swing at the same time, you know, what sort of results then. And if it's, as in this case, it's both just a tap swing, nothing's charged up, that's an equal uh, measure of force and they just bounce off each other but again they're physically knocked back and slide and they're rotating and blah blah um, okay so green jumps charges his sword in the air which is something that's doable and worth noting that you can do and then <coughs> he's got it charged up in the opposite direction for red so when he lets go it goes right towards red red jumps over green at this point wants to get his sword back as quickly as possible so he just dodges towards it because he doesn't want to lose his sword. Red jumps over and in the meantime has charged his sword and when we get to this point basically Green's got his sword back and is going to try and defend in some way going to see if he can quickly swing out fast enough but Red basically has the advantage because he's already got his charged up and there's not really much Green can do so at this point Red has sort of won the rock paper scissors battle and this guy gets cut in half so that's kind of an example of a what I would hope to be a typical the feel of a typical match uh in in this game. <laughs>